Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Dialogue. I'm Tamur Shamil. In last 10 years, Pakistan has seen steady growth and development. Though there have been challenges, external and external, but at the same time, Pakistan has fought those challenges very resiliently. Uh, there is a big war going on in the neighborhood in Afghanistan and 17 years on since the United States and the NATO forces came in Afghanistan, we see that Afghanistan is still unstable. Pakistan, while is working on development, peace and prosperity, Pakistan has embarked on China-Pakistan economic corridor. Pakistan has been improving its relations with the neighboring countries like Iran, Afghanistan, Russia, China for that matter, and has been trying to improve its relations with India as well. Uh, today we are going to talk about Pakistan's foreign policy, Pakistan's future foreign policy as the new government would be coming in. Uh, in last 10 years there were some challenges, there were some threats as well as I discussed earlier, internal and external. The bigger question now would be that how would the new government look at the prospects, op opportunities and the challenges that Pakistan would be having in the future. Uh, having a, a doable, workable foreign policy is need of the hour for Pakistan. Uh, Pakistan has to improve its relations with the neighboring countries because Pakistan is looking for peace and stability. And Pakistan, as I said earlier, has fought extremism and terrorism successfully. While at the same time, we also see that there has been some uh, changes as well uh, regionally. Uh, regional alliances are changing. Pakistan is working with China. Pakistan wants to bring peace and stability in Afghanistan as well. But we have also seen that somehow our friends, international community, United States for that matter, they have been critical of Pakistan, the do more mantra has been there and repeated by the US administration. India on the other side has been skeptic about the developments in Pakistan. Uh, that is understandable because the elections in India are, are contested on anti-Pakistan sentiment. Uh, but as I said earlier, what would be the challenges for the uh, new government? Uh, the chairman of Pakistan, Tariq Insaf, who is generally expected to be the uh, forming uh, the government in the future, has said that Pakistan would want to improve its relations with India. But interestingly, he too was demonized by the Indian media. Why is that? And would India want to improve its relations with Pakistan? Pakistan has made this very clear that Pakistan would want to improve its relations. Would India do that? Uh, America and American interests in the region, we're going to talk about this as well. Pakistan wants to uh, improve its relations with Iran because the opportunities are there. Both are working on pipeline, uh, gas pipeline as well. The prospects are there. Pakistan might want to connect with the TAPI as well. Uh, the memorandum has been uh, signed and Pakistan is working on it. So all these issues, we are going to discuss about this, Pakistan's for, uh, future foreign policy, uh, prospects and opportunities with our special guest today in the studios. Let me uh, introduce them. Our first guest is Air Vice Marshal Retired Ikram Ullah Pati. He's a renowned uh, senior defense analyst. So welcome to the show. Second guest is Ambassador Burhan al-Islam, a renowned senior Pakistani diplomat and an expert on Pakistan's foreign policy. So welcome to the show. Uh, ABM Ikram Ullah Pati, starting with the uh, prospects and opportunities that are there for Pakistan in the future. New government would be coming in. Uh, most probably Pakistan Tariq and Saf, as we can see. Let's see, because that is, we are going to see when the votes would be counted uh, in the National Assembly. But the challenges certainly are there. Also, the opportunities. War in the neighborhood in Afghanistan, a 17-year-long 17, 17 war in Afghanistan, uh, a hostile neighbor like India, but at the same time, opportunities like China Pakistan Economic Corridor, TAPI, and gas pipeline with Iran, all these things. How do you, what do you make out of this, these challenges and prospects? You see, the well-being of its people is the objective of any and every government. And to bring that about, there, sh there must be peace and security. And for that, there must be economic and political stability. Right. <clears throat> Unfortunately, over the last five years, and even in fact ten years, we have, we have seen that and we have witnessed that uh, we haven't had any economic and political strength or stability in the country. And the focus of the governments have been mostly been on their survival. And hence, they, they could not attend to the core issues uh, uh, that the country and the nation faced. And today, we find that while uh, the uh, uh, terrorism situation has Im improved fairly, but we continue to have a very weak economy. And uh, we are yet to see the new government, but uh, the last government was uh, pretty shaky all along. 
and in, hence it could not devote due attention to, to the affairs of the country. And uh, then of course we see that uh, we, we have a, a hostile neighbor in the east who was not willing to talk to us and we have not had any uh, bilateral dialogue on to where we could discuss our issues beside Kashmir it is now water which is again a much bigger and looming issue. Then on the west we have had Afghanistan for the last 17 years we have had uh, America sitting there and of course uh, with this uh, rhetoric or mantra of do more all along. <coughs> And even with Iran, we have had uh, uh, relations which have been uh, not too good. Uh, in fact, they should have been much better than what they, they, we have experienced so far. And while, of course, China is there, uh, it's an uh, all-weather friend. And uh, we've seen that with this new project of uh, CPAC, we, we are hoping and expecting that uh, it will add to, to the economic uh, prosperity of the country. It will bring in new jobs and, of course, uh, uh, our serious issue of uh, power or energy would be solved to great extent. So th these are, these are the uh, you know uh, uh, the, the challenges and opportunities that we f uh, uh, find. Uh, and in in uh, as PTI's chairman in Imran Khan, we find a a, a leader who is unique, uh, unprecedented as far as Pakistan's politics is concerned. He has a global uh, globally known player celebrity status. He is known everywhere, especially in the West. And he is known to be a very sincere, a very determined, a very dynamic person. So we, we can expect that uh, uh, as he has come in the name of change, so he will bring about change. Uh, if we, we look at his track record, he means what he says and he does <coughs> what he says. Right. So th that is something that so people can look forward to. So the hopes are very high. And uh, of course, uh, in order to uh, remain popular, in order to continue to enjoy the influence or the charisma that he has had so far, uh, PTI and Imran Khan will have to deliver and will have to start delivering from day one. Only then people will be happy and satisfied and contented with the choice that they have made. So Pakistan's image abroad would be a challenge for Pakistan Tariq al Saf if they come in power or, or for any government that would be coming in, in future. Pakistan's image abroad, certainly. Certainly. And right. uh, in fact, uh, uh, PTI will have uh, an advantage over all previous governments that we have had because the, the chairman is already very well known. Mm. He, he'll be heard and he'll be welcomed. So he, he will have an edge over the previous uh, leaders that we have had. Right. So we, we hope <clears throat> that he, it will be much more convenient and he, he'll find uh, it will be much more effective for him to communicate with the foreign governments on uh, matters of national interest of Pakistan and issue uh, and resolve issues with them. So it will be easy for him. This is a very interesting point and I would put this question to Mr. Burhan Islam that how important is the personality when it comes to negotiations, uh, foreign policy, Pakistan's image abroad as ABM Ikramullah Bhatti is saying that maybe an individual who is already known would be having a better placement, uh, an edge perhaps, in the international arena. How do you see this? I agree with you. I mean, it, it is a great time for Pakistan, I'll say, important time in our national history. We are seeing a change at a time when we really needed a change. And Imran Khan represents a change in every sense of the word change from the past leadership quality, their vision, their priorities, with his own priority, how he thinks that Pakistan should move at this stage to, in the context of the challenges Pakistan faces uh, uh, in the region and also domestically. He's the guy who has come with a, I mean, a forward-looking agenda. He wants to see change in the living condition of people and also wants to see that uh, Pakistan is respected globally. We achieve stability and we are, uh, uh, we are, the agenda that he thinks that we should be pursued can be pursued in a stable and peaceful environment. There are a lot of challenges globally as some of those issues raised by my colleague also and you in your intro you have mentioned. I think <coughs> it is an important time, I'll say, because historically also I can explain to you, 
that in 1946, people of the subcontinent voted on the question whether Pakistan will get independence. Yeah. Muslims of India will get an independent <coughs> state in a broad subcontinent where we were dominated by the Hindus, 80% Hindus, 20% Muslim. And at a crucial time, people really voted for a, it was a right choice that yes, we should get Pakistan as an independent state where we would live with our own culture, tradition, and with respect and dignity. And subsequently in 1970, another crucial time in our national history, people voted on the question whether Pakistan will remain united or not. So much of important issues marred the relationship, made the relationship between East and West so difficult. Constitutional issues, language issues, cultural issues. At that time, people made a choice. Mm. But the leadership at that time made r wrong uh, decisions. It was a time that we could really set a good tradition and democratic process could move forward. Mm. But leadership failed at that time, to my reading. And this time, people voted on the question whether Pakistan will achieve stability or not. I think, again, You're people get a good day. choice. Present day. Present day. day. Just will Pakistan this year's, achieve stability or not? Right. That's it. That is the choice that the people got for the elections mm. this right. last month. The economic stability and the, uh, the uh, social stability the that we're looking for. Economic, social, stability in the region, foreign policy choices, how the leadership behave and present themselves on their issues so that you, they get the best deal to get the best environment for your people. I think very crucial time. And I'm very happy that people gave a choice the way it wanted. I shared my, my assessment with you as well just two weeks before the elections. If you recall that I said this party should come and a new party, I think Pakistani people will vote for it. And my, if you remember, my suggestion was that Imran Khan will get more than 100 seats mm -hmm. and People's Party will get about 30, 40, Mia Nawaz Sharif Party about 60. This has happened. This was my intuition as well as my wish. So people have been looking for change and exactly. most probably will be, will be seeing that in the future. And this is the best setup mm -hmm. in which we can expect a change, a new leadership, dynamic leadership, leading the country to a nice path. Of progress. You very rightly said and used this phrase, the, uh, the, the best deal. Yeah. That is the, the, the I, I think, the most important point, uh, A.V.M. Kramula Pati, that people are looking for the best deal. Now, coming specifically to United States and Pakistan relations, recently we have seen some ups and downs. Uh, rather, I would say in last uh, year and a half since uh, President Trump is in the power in the United States, uh, some statements by the State Department, Secretary State Department of uh, United States. Uh, regarding the IMF also, uh, Pakistan has been very uh, sensitive about the issue of China-Pakistan economic corridor and the loans as well. This long war in Afghanistan, the Domor Mantra, United States approach towards Pakistan, what would be Pakistan's approach towards the United States in the future and how should we go about it? Well, see, in, in my view, the relationship between Pakistan and America has been improving in the last uh, immediate few months. Because when we see that uh, they were able to find and kill Mullah Fazlullah through a drone attack. And whereas Pakistan has been saying this for years, that uh, TTP leadership and TTP itself is residing in Afghanistan and taking attacks in Pakistan. And we never got a positive response from Afghanistan or from America. But eventually we saw that they were able to locate him, which I'm sure they must be knowing already where he is. And they decided to, you know, eliminate, at, at, attack right. and eliminate him. So that is something which, which actually confirms Pakistan's stance. And uh, when the Americans do that, that in fact means that they, they like to, you know, they have done a good turn towards Pakistan. They have acknowledged Pakistan's contribution. And now they want something, of course, as, a, as an acknowledgement. And then we see that Americans for the last 17 years have been refusing to talk to the Taliban directly. And in the last uh, couple of months, we have seen that gradually they said, OK, we will participate in, in, a, in a dialogue with, uh, while the, uh, the current Afghan government is also there in their presence. Finally, they were willing to even talk to the Taliban directly. And 
there, there are uh, reports that uh, it, it was facilitated by Pakistan, wherein the American and the Taliban could sit together directly and speak. Now, uh, when, when we uh, hear this in the media and we read this, uh, that, that means the, the backdoor channels were already active. Uh, of course, the Taliban have had their uh, office in Qatar for a long time and the, the Americans must already be uh, talking to them. And now when they declare that they are willing to talk to them directly and we also see the reports that the, the talks have taken place and now they have come in the media. What it means to say is that uh, they both, the Taliban and the Americans, have come to a certain mutually agreeable state of affairs. Uh, that is why they would like to make it known. And we can be hopeful that in, in the coming months, uh, they, there would be some sort of a truce, some sort of understanding, and we will eventually start to see peace in Afghanistan. In Afghanistan right. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, both uh, Afghan uh, government as well as the Americans, and of course, certainly the Taliban, uh, would acknowledge that this has come about because of Pakistan. So Pakistan has delivered on its responsibility, it has played its role and I think that should contribute positively towards the relationship between the two countries. Right. And when we, when we come to the IMF and P Mr. Pompeo saying that they will be watching IMF, essentially if there was no CPAC, would the Americans made the same statement? No. So, so this statement essentially is directed against the Chinese, yeah. not, not against Pakistan. And Pakistan, Pakistan is in the loop, certainly. Yes, so. of course. But you see, the, the essentially the primary responsibility of the IMF is to bail out governments to support them in their economic hardships. So it is Pakistan's right to go to the IMF and seek assistance. Certainly. And it is IMF's duty to provide that assistance. Whereas America being the largest contributor towards IMF can, of course, through IMF, introduce certain conditionalities which makes it difficult for the recipient country. That is something that we may be fearful of. And, and this exactly, this is very important point and very interesting point, uh, Ambassador Brown Islam, that what A.V.M. Ikramana Bhatti is saying, this is very interesting that people in Pakistan also look at this statement by the Secretary of State in a different way. There are different ways of looking at the statement. Strategically, what A.V.M. Bhatti is saying that this perhaps is, is directed towards China. Strategically, this sounds very, uh, very uh, well. But at the same time, it's about Pakistan. Pakistan collaborating with China, working on a mega economic activity. Perhaps Pakistan still towards China. Uh, our American friends are not very much happy with this, this block coming up, the Asian block, Pakistan, China, and other countries. Uh, how do you see Pakistan-US relations in the wake of these developments, regional developments that are taking place? Though some of the developments that have taken place look positive. But I will say that in broader frame, the, the relationship between Pakistan and USA is not very positive, very good. It is tense, it is uncertain relationship. If you talk about a partnership with a country that you maintain for 60 years, you, uh, a new government is about to emerge it is facing economic challenges and difficulty domestically. And you get the reading that Pakistan might be going to IMF for some economic assistance. Instead of saying something positive, they are saying something hostile. I would think that it's, it's, it reflects that uh, uh, it's not very positive. It, is, it reflects of their mind of keeping Pakistan under pressure. Earlier we heard about them saying, do more. They are saying about the reasons for failure in Afghanistan, entirely putting on Pakistan's shoulder. Now that a new government is about to come, you are giving a, a, a very undiplomatic statement, I would say. And I will see my interpretation is different from so what my colleagues said. Do you said. see it, these statements keeping, let's say, the next government under pressure, perhaps? It is. It is to start with, you know, this is uh, international community behaves sometimes very unpredictably. And uh, I would say, different from what my colleague said, that US would have said something different to put you under pressure if that CPAC was not there and we didn't have that special relationship developing with China. At that time, possibly another issue would have come. 
maybe terrorism, right. maybe Afghanistan, oh, do more again. So that's what I say that uh, America is doing it to keep us under pressure. Mm -hmm. And they want to see how our new leadership behave and uh, prioritize its, its uh, focus future that it wants to do and deal with USA. Right. So putting it that look on IMF, you have tough time coming, but talk about issues that you have on the table. Let's see what you have to offer. Let's see what we can do for you. And also the FATF issue. That is also FATF? a big issue. We're going, to discuss about, we're going to discuss about this as well I and have... other uh, options for Pakistan, foreign policy options. After this break, we're discussing Pakistan's foreign policy, the future prospects, opportunities that are there for Pakistan, for the next government, the new government that would be coming in, and threats as well. Because extremism and terrorism has been a threat to Pakistan. And Pakistan has in addressed this issue internally, but externally there are a lot of players. How would Pakistan act on it and look at this uh, challenge in the future after this break? Stay with us. Passion for polo will be the highest on the world's highest polo ground. Shandur invites visitors to experience a traditional polo tournament between the teams of Chitral and Gilgit. The tournament is held on Shandur Pass, the highest polo ground in the world, at 3,700 meters above sea level. The first time a polo tournament took place on the Shandu Pass was in 1936. It is a place unique and exotic in itself, surrounded by some of the most spectacular mountain scenery in the world. The event marks the annual rivalry between the teams of Chitral and Gilgit. The polo tournament has some added attractions for the visitors, trout fishing at the nearby streams and lakes, and a festival of folk dances and music of northern Pakistan. The event in itself offers a fascinating insight into the lifestyle of the people of this region. Their culture and indigenous customs are a delight to behold for the visitors. Crystal clear lakes, snow-covered mountains, alpine flowers, and vast stretches of green grass are added attractions. Fairs and festivals of Pakistan. Welcome back. We are discussing Pakistan's uh, foreign policy and the future uh, challenges and opportunities for the new government in terms of Pakistan's foreign policy. Pakistan has been fighting extremism and terrorism. Pakistan has fought a successful war against extremism and terrorism. But at the same time, uh, making friends, new friends in the region is also indispensable. Working on China-Pakistan economic corridor is indispensable. And Pakistan would do what would be, what would be in Pakistan's best national interest. This is what uh, Pakistan believes in. Avim Kramula Bhatti talking about shortly about uh, Pakistan and uh, United States relations, and then we'll move on. Pakistan also placed on uh, FATF gray list. Now the statement from the Secretary of State Pompeo regarding IMF, and as you were saying earlier, that uh, United States is looking at Pakistan in the Chinese context. We too, obviously, have have uh, opportunities and prospects in the region. What would be the future of Pakistan-U.S. relations if Pakistan continues to work on the templates that Pakistan is still working on? 
You see, the relationship of Pakistan and America, unfortunately, since 1947, has remained transactional and uh, totally interest-based, which in fact is correct in all uh, international relations, bilateral relations, they are all interest-based, but typically in the case of Pakistan, they have been transactional. And as long as the Americans had uh, a specific interest in this region or vis-a-vis -vis Pakistan, they would place Pakistan on a special pedestal and of course uh, provide assistance and aid uh, and look the other way, uh, whatever was happening in Pakistan, be it a nuclear program or be it uh, uh, Kashmir movement or <coughs> uh, supporting the Kashmir freedom struggle. And certainly we find that after 9-11, the Kashmir freedom struggle becomes terrorism. So uh, unfortunately, uh, today we find that uh, for the Americans, the Chinese are now uh, fast growing to an extent where they can challenge the sole superpower status of the Americans and Pakistan being very close friend to the Chinese uh, automatically gets uh, pushed into the Chinese camp and of course away from the Americans. And the, the Americans find Indians who were Pakistan's uh, arch enemy to be uh, of use to them more than Pakistan uh, in, in, in checking the, the, the American influence, uh, the Indian influence in the region, uh, the, the Chinese influence in the region, vis-a-vis uh, -vis Central Asia or South Asia or even Southeast Asia. Uh, so uh, it is now uh, a, a challenge for the new government that how can we continue to have the Americans still interested in Pakistan. And keep a good balance. And them. a good, good balance. Whereas Pakistan has actually served them for the last 17 years in their uh, fight in Afghanistan, they've provided uh, uh, logistics through land routes. They've allowed them to operate their drones. And uh, unfortunately, Pakistan has always been, you know, bombarded with this demand of uh, do more. Whereas we have <coughs> done uh, the best that we could do and we have supported them in a war which in fact was imposed on us. It was not Pakistan's war, it was imposed on us and we had to participate in order to protect ourselves. And now that the Americans are closing on to hopefully the finish of this war and uh, they, they are uh, finally settling down their issues with Taliban and uh, we can look forward to eventually a settlement where the, the Americans may be allowed by the Taliban to have some sort of a foothold, uh, a continued foothold within uh, Afghanistan, but that would, uh, as is known, would come about with the help of Pakistan. So Pakistan is still... Uh, useful for the Americans because they continue to uh, need that land route through Pakistan to support their, uh, uh, you know, uh, presence in, in Afghanistan, that military presence. And of course, uh, they, they, their settlement with the Taliban. So I think uh, we, we need to leverage this with the Americans uh, more and uh, make sure that they, they uh, in their uh, exuberance to uh, support India versus uh, China, they, they should not be so antagonistic or hostile towards us. We need to play this up. Uh, Mr. Bharan Islam, this, this uh, notion that Pakistan has a tilt towards China, do you agree with this? Because many people are of the view that Pakistan has to keep a balance between two big powers, China and the United States. We have been working very closely with, with the US. Now we have an opportunity with China. And that this opportunity shouldn't uh, adversely affect our relations with other friends, other countries for that matter. And do you think that this would be uh, uh, the case in the future or this is predictable or th things would be different? I think I agree with you that there is a tilt in Pakistan's policy at this moment towards China. And I think it is the right choice that Pakistan has made, uh, particularly when you have very unpredictable relations with the United States last 10 years and recent last two years have been, you know, uh, terrible, I should say. Under the circumstances, best choice for Pakistan, Pakistan must build its strategic relationship, strengthen it with China. It is possible both economic, political, and in other areas, not only on, on issue-based responses, strategic deep thinking as a solid partner in the region, both China and Pakistan should understand and act accordingly. Only then 
we can deal with other challenges. There is no question, and I don't support the idea of a balance. What balance we are talking about? I mean, tilt. U.S. had tilt towards Pakistan during the Cold War. What we got in the process? Nothing. Almost zero, sir. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, this time it is a tilt towards China. Sorry, you were saying. Sure, sure. It's a tilt towards China, which is seems good for us, economic, political, but broader context of strategic uh, situation and uh, placement of the countries. I think Pakistan's best choice and bait is now to keep close relationship with China. We uh, understand American priorities and problems, but ha be helpful, but that doesn't mean that you have to give in to their pressure. Keep, maintain respectable relationship, as Imran has said. It has to be a relationship, mutual beneficial. It cannot be just do more. Time has come to tell American friends that uh, this sort of pressure, I should say bully, right. should stop. Respectable relationship needs to be built with Pakistan. A new leader has come with good ideas, priorities, his perspective, his understanding of the situation much better than previous government and leadership. I give full marks to Imran Khan. <coughs> I'm very hopeful that he will he will put his options on the table and very nicely and vigorously pursue with the Americans and with other countries of the region and globally. So we discussed Pakistan's relations with, with the United States, with China as well. We discussed Afghanistan. Coming towards India, uh, India has been a problem in the region for Pakistan. Uh, we have seen a lot of ups and downs, a lot of accusations from the across the border. When uh, India saw Pakistan Tariqin Saf winning and, and Indians saw PTS chairman's speech that he made and he talked about Kashmir as well. He talked about improving relations with, with India if India wants to improve relations with Pakistan. The Indian media was actually demonizing the whole thing that Pakistan talked about Kashmir. Talking about Pakistan-India relations and also keeping in mind Bhartiya Janata Party and their leader Narendra Modi in India, uh, Avi Mikramula Bhatti, do you see Pakistan-India relations improving in the future? Also keeping in mind the new government in Pakistan. Well, uh, I, th I think f uh, for a change we can look forward to initiation of a dialogue between the two countries. And that essentially would happen because of Imran Khan's popularity within India and a pressure on the, uh, or a moral pressure on the Indian government. Uh, but the fact remains that uh, it is now the Indians who are going to have their elections. And uh, BJP with its roots in RSS uh, would be uh, planning to contest the elections with, uh, with an agenda item of anti-Pakistan slogan uh, as, uh, you know, as, as, as a maneuver to win votes. And with that, uh, they, they cannot befriend Pakistan or be friendly with Pakistan uh, at least in the next uh, 8 to 10 months. So I think th there is a challenge uh, both for India and Pakistan how to surmount this situation, whereas there is a one compulsion to, of course, start a dialogue and hopefully start moving towards solving our mutual problems, both Kashmir and water issue. And on the other side, they have to uh, participate in those elections with the uh, anti-Pakistan uh, rhetoric as uh, a major tool to win votes. So uh, I think th they'll have to find a balance, uh, the Indian government, BJP especially, in, 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 this, in, this, in these two uh, aspects and then move forward because uh, uh, this is going to be a moment of decision or, uh, for, for BJP. How do they want to go? They want to continue to use this anti-Pakistan card or not? And uh, whereas we, we find that their ambassador has already visited Imran Khan, uh, Mr. Modi has already mm. spoken with him and congratulated him. So, uh, which, which augurs well and we can, we can be hopeful. But then we also know their compulsions. And uh, we also know that, you see, in Kashmir, they have uh, dissociated with PDP and brought about central's rule. Uh, we were at, in, in their uh, original manifesto in 2000. Uh, 14, when they came into power, they said that we are going to uh, dissolve the special status of Kashmir and make it like any other state of India, which, which could not happen. So, uh, 
they would like to attempt that again because uh, at least that was enough for Indian voters to vote for BJP. So uh, this is uh, something which we will have to see and wait as to how BJP tackles this new situation. But the fact remains that because of Imran Khan coming into power, Indians will be under uh, more pressure to start a dialogue, invite him and or visit and then of course start discussing our issues, both Kashmir as well as water. Uh, in the previous government, when Pakistan wanted to improve its relations with India, Ambassador Islam, uh, we saw some uh, incidents like Uri attack and the Pathan court attack. The spoilers are there, certainly. But as AVM Kramula Pati is saying, that India has been very consistent in, in not improving its relations with, with Pakistan. Uh, the prospects are there, though, as uh, AVM is talking about. But do you think that there would be a major change in the BJP stance towards Pakistan or BJP's policies towards Pakistan? Do you think that new government in Pakistan would bring new opportunities for uh, BJP government or Pakistan-India relations? I think so. I'm very hopeful. I see as uh, uh, it as a positive development because of change in leadership in Pakistan, change in posture and policy and priorities as it looks from the press of Imran Khan and also Indian leadership. Prime Minister Modi spoke to Imran Khan and after 10-15 uh, days their ambassador has come to call on today he yeah. met. Uh, I see all these developments as positive. And India, you know, as I discussed in another program, that new beginning is possible only if India changes its stance a little bit. India eases its overall pressure on, on Kashmir and the Kashmiri people, its rhetoric on, on, on border issues and other stuff, and LOC violations, killing of, ruthless killing of people in Kashmir. There should be a little bit indication from the Indians by easing of tension and pressure on the Kashmiris to tell Imran Khan that, look, we want a little bit of change. We want to move forward a bit. As he says, a new beginning. A new beginning is possible if you stop at the point where you have taken aggressive stance on many issues and Pakistani people, decision makers and security establishment are pretty worried and concerned. So <coughs> you have to tell us what beginning you want. My gut feeling is that Indian leadership should say that, okay, on Kashmir, gradually we are going to ease and pressure and military operation, if not cease totally, but reduce. Could be a signal to Imran Khan, because look, we can talk about a broad-based, multi-point, uh, multi-issue based dialogue with India. Uh, this is the time to move forward, but then the issue that election year is Indian leadership ready to do it. My feeling is that this Pakistan card, this time Modi doesn't need to play. Because one, first, it, you cannot deceive Indian people twice. Last time also people saw all those jargons and anti-Pakistan statements, but after elections they saw that Nothing substantial you can prove against Pakistan. So they have played enough of the Pakistani anti-Pakistani card, card, and, and they would want to. On the other hand, their Kulbushan and other uh, cards they have played right. also. So, what? What else? What more? You can do right. with Pakistan and against Pakistan. That's why possibly Modi will not go for that. There could be some positive change. I see. Although, my gut feeling is that sometimes I think that unless India makes fundamental change in its decision and thinking about Kashmir, there cannot be no substantial progress. Mm -hmm. But I don't lose hope. There is always possible in international uh, uh, politics. Diplomacy is the art of possibilities and, and options. Uh, Avim uh, Bhatti talking about the regional prospects that are there for Pakistan. Pakistan has improved its relations with Russia. Now, just recalling what happened in 80s, Pakistan and Afghanistan and Russia and United States. But today we see that both countries are coming closer. Uh, also, uh, the Russian uh, military troops were here in Pakistan for military drills. Pakistani troops might also be visiting Russia soon for, for training. Uh, Russia and Pakistan are coming closer. Also discussing about Afghanistan, the future of Afghanistan, peace and stability in Afghanistan. 
how do you see this this move by Pakistan and Russia as well to come closer and work for peace and stability? Well, uh, th you see, if, if we look back in previous uh, at least three decades, uh, two, two major uh, international uh, developments have taken place. Firstly, of course, the dismemberment of the Soviet Union and uh, Russia losing its superpower status. And secondly, uh, China rising uh, rapidly and almost uh, coming to a, s a situation where it is seen uh, to be uh, challenging the superpower status of uh, USA. So that has uh, jolted the entire international uh, map uh, as far as uh, uh, alignments and relationships uh, are, are concerned. So uh, we, we find that while uh, Pakistani troops are exercising with the Russians who were at one time very close to India and opposed to Pakistan, and Indian troops exercising with the American troops who were at one time Pakistan's friend and of course opposed to India. So this, this is a major shift that has actually uh, started to take shape. And uh, we, we, we also see that, uh, you see, uh, the, uh, the, the Saudi influence within the region is being challenged by Iran. Mm. And, uh, and in Middle East for that matter. And, right. and, and Russia is mm. now becoming again instrumental. We find that they have actually succeeded in Syria. And the, these Americans are almost wanting to withdraw and uh, leaving uh, or accepting their defeat and, and Russia's victory. And they've been able to successfully safeguard uh, Assad's regime. Uh, so uh, the, the, these are the new developments. And of course, the, the alignment remains where we find that even Turkey, Iran, Pakistan, they, they, they are apparently appearing to be towards Russia, while Turkey remains a NATO member. So that, that's very interesting development. And we find the, the, the Iranians continue to have influence in, uh, in Lebanon, in Syria, in Yemen. So, uh, which, which is being uh, questioned and challenged by Saudi Arabia, who is a very close friend of Pakistan. So, these right. are the new developments, these are the new challenges, <coughs> which of course our new government will have to face. Right. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Thank you for your time. Avim Ikramullah Bhatti, pleasure having you on the show. Thank you for your time. Ambassador Burhan Islam, pleasure having you on the show. Thank you for your time. Today, we discussed about Pakistan's foreign policy, and we'll wind up today's show on this point that uh, there are opportunities for Pakistan in the future, and certainly. Uh, it depends a lot on the leadership, that how the leadership is going to address the issue of Pakistan's foreign policy, how Pakistan is going to improve its relations and also its image abroad. Pakistan has fought a successful war against extremism and terrorism, and we also want to see Pakistan progressing and prospering. Thank you for watching today's program. See you next time. Khuda Hafiz. But at the same time, we also have to give this very clear message to the friends and enemies that Pakistan would retaliate. And what we are doing inside Pakistan, we also expect that our friends would be reciprocating that inside Afghanistan as well. Thank you for watching today's program. See you next time. Khuda Hafiz.